Hello Indie Game Fans, it's my birthday! So for the fourth year in a row, here are upcoming pixel art indie games for 2024 and beyond, beginning with Lords of Exile, a throwback action platformer that recently got a new trailer, but this game has been delayed from one year to the next, originally slated for 2022, so hopefully 2024 will be the year. This little familiar guy following our hero around is new, although a number of bosses have been in previous trailers, where they have nailed the 8-bit look and takes inspiration from the non-Metroidvania Castlevania games. I've refreshed the list as compared to last year to make space for new upcoming games, including at least 3 games never before seen on this channel, but first let's talk about Odin Fall, a game which I covered during the Steam Shoot'em Up festival, which for some reason included any and all games with shooting in them, in which this game is a pixel art action roguelite in which you have to take down robotic Norse gods. As you can tell from the music, this game is Metal AF, with an interesting weapon customization system that allows you to mix and match parts to craft your own unique gun and kind of looks like Nuclear Throne meets Vampire Survivors. Here's the newly reviewed title that was just announced in King's Grief, a 2D Zelda style action adventure game but with some Metroidvania inspiration, as well as turn-based resource gathering and city building, Heroes of Might and Magic style. As such, it's a game that blends all kinds of genres set in a plague-ridden world, in which you play as the resurrected king fighting to reclaim his land, looking pretty impressive when zoomed out. I'm a sucker for chibi pixel art since miniature creatures, characters and monsters look impressive, even more so in large numbers, which is the case here in Escape the Mad Empire. This is a roguelite dungeon crawler but as a classic CRPG, meaning that it has real time with pause style combat which is unique. It is an abstraction of the CRPG that takes out the whole quest lines and going back to town part but does have meta progression in the form of base building, certainly being one of the more unique upcoming games. Speaking of chibi pixel art, I'm very impressed with the look of Super Fantasy Kingdom as well, a roguelike survival city builder in which you're building out and expanding your kingdom, but watch out for hordes of monsters that are attempting to destroy it. You have a party of heroes to train and upgrade to act as your shield, but of course, must have the economy to support them with the minimalist pixel art looking very impressive. In fact, it does remind me of Heroes Hour and is perhaps a key example of why indie developers choose pixel art since it looks good and also the timing is right since the market isn't oversaturated with games using these sprites just yet. One of the most impressive indie games to come along in recent memory is Yes, Your Grace from 2020, in which Heavy is the head that wears the crown as you play as the monarch of a kingdom, having to make crucial decisions to ensure the survival of your people. The developers are back with the sequel titled Snowfall, which is a direct continuation of the first game, picking up one year after the events there and your responsibilities remain the same protect your family, keep your people alive and survive the winter. They have traded in the pure pixel art of the original with more 3D-ish assets in the background which isn't my favourite look, but I have to say, the pixel art portion remains as impressive as ever, with this new style enabling them to use shadows, lighting, depth and parallax much more effectively and still looks great. Of course, you cannot bet against the developer of Celeste, who are in the middle of making the next game in the self-styled explore action platformer named Earthblade. Now the developers have stopped short of calling this a metroidvania, although the world sure seems to be interconnected, and they mention countless mysteries to pick apart as you attempt to piece together Earth's fractured history and looks impressive. Possibly the next big hit in the life sim slash farming sim genre is Chef RPG, in which you're managing your own restaurant but have to go out to fish, forage and hunt in order to gather ingredients. 
The restaurant is fully customizable from the kitchen to the dining area, so you need to optimize the space so that you have as many happy customers as possible. I do like the pixel art in this game and it looks nice overall, although character proportions do seem a little off, but I love cooking in games and it looks well done here, being an interesting alternative in the space. With his Kickstarter stating a Q3 2024 release window, so fingers crossed it makes it. Yeah. Wish city where everyone gets busy, cause minimum wage here is something like 650. Ground running rampant, paper changing hands like pamphlets, government can't seem to understand it. A game which I came across first on Twitter is My Familiar, a self styled buddy cop RPG that is filled with ducks, taking place on the mean streets of a place known as Wish City, where corruption is king. Evidently, from the trailer, rap will play a central part in this game as you make your way through the gauntlet of enemies that includes demons, but your party of 6 playable characters includes a sausage thief and a luchador duck, so what's not to love in this very strange title? The turn-based combat looks good and is quite the classic Japanese style turn-based RPG, making it for fans of the genre. Uh, yeah, cause they know who we are. Come on. The next game from the developer of Monster Sanctuary is titled Aether Mensa and similarly features a variety of monsters, pixel art and turn-based combat, but instead of being a side-scrolling platformer, it is a roguelite instead. This means making your way through the world using the powerful creatures, but when you fall in combat, the cycle repeats and you go again, and based on how great their previous game was, is certainly one to watch. Speaking of monster tamers, here's a long in development title that definitely should be on your watch list since Creature Keeper is a 2D Zelda style action adventure game but with a monster taming twist. You can befriend and recruit monsters to fight alongside with you, having a throwback pixel art style that is just so well done. There's a pocket garden system to grow plants, a cooking system to prepare food for monsters, a bestiary to fill up, crafting, weapon variety and even hats for your creatures and should finally be here in 2024. This next title is new to the channel as well and looks impressive, but even more interesting is that Dragon Toss is an action MMO RPG of all things. It is not easy making an MMO, much less as a smaller developer, so I have to commend their effort for trying since the sprite work and environments in this look awesome. There will be more than 20 unique playable heroes, which is quite the number, with instanced, randomized dungeons which you can dive into with friends, strangers, or even alone. There is of course PvP as well, so I hope they got the netcode thing figured out, as well as expected MMO stuff like player housing, guilds, global events, a trading market, and more, and where you'll be able to customize your specific version of a hero through various orbs and artifacts, which is of course wrapped up with some of the most impressive looking pixel art that I have seen. When this game was first reviewed, it got rightfully criticised as a Stardew Valley clone since some of the environmental objects like trees looked just a little bit too familiar, but apparently the developer of Super Zoo Story are working on making new assets as they go along. If the title wasn't clear, this is basically a farming sim combined with a tycoon game in which you're caring for your animals, growing their food, and taking care of them, while also catering to the needs of your visitors. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, so I can see why the developers chose a look like this, but the animals look nice even if the proportions are pretty off. After quite the hiatus, the Siege and the Sand Fox recently resurfaced earlier this year and is of note, not only because of the gorgeous pixel art, but because this is a self-styled Stealthvania title. You play as the legendary Sand Fox, venturing into underground ruins, majestic palaces and ancient prisons, seeking to uncover a true threat from a sand-born evil deep beneath the earth. 
It does remind me of the classic Prince of Persia side-scrollers, but of course, much more beautiful, in which our hero has to sneak past guards and use a variety of traps and gadgets to avoid getting caught, being rather unique with nothing else quite like this on the market. Yes, yes, it has been 6 years and counting since The Last Night was revealed at the Microsoft E3 presentation back in 2017, which seems like a lifetime ago, pandemic and all, and honestly, I do think that the shine is beginning to wear off just a little, since while it still looks impressive, there are a number of other games looking to ape this art style. Still, it's a cinematic action platformer set in a post-cyberpunk world, exploring themes of inequality in a world where all the menial labour has been automated away, so fingers crossed 2024 will be the year. Here's a gorgeous pixel art aerial combat title of note in which you play as the Rebellion fighting against an oppressive regime in Windrunners. You're using your superior aerial skills to outmaneuver your opponents in intense dogfights along with destroying giant bosses that looks like quite the challenge. It appears that this developer had to take on contract work to sustain itself before turning their attention to their own game which is a hustle that I can respect, so let's hope they have the funds to complete this game since it looks awesome. There are certainly glimpses of games like Love Rousers in this, but on a much more zoomed out scale which only means that the backgrounds and environments have time to shine. I do judge how impressive pixel art games are based on the designs of their clouds and it looks impressive here, so I cannot wait to dive in. Here's quite the curiosity in Momodora Moonlit Farewell, technically the fifth game in the Momodora series that follows up from Reverie Under the Moonlight, in which this series always stars maple leaf building priestesses battling against a great evil and protecting the village, with this looking to be no exception, although I don't think they're linked in terms of narrative. This follows the developer's previous title, Minoria, which was a different take and by the developer's own admission, was not what they wanted to achieve, so let's hope this entry fulfills their ambitions. Remember when it talked about pixel art clouds? How about the clouds in C Blip? This side-scrolling life sim crafting title reminds me of Terraria but where you play as a pirate, adding a world map, exploration and adventure on the high seas. You have a home base on an island to expand and build out, including farming, fishing and various crafting systems, but the visuals in this are really top-notch, so let's hope the gameplay systems will match. The next title from the developers of Owl Boy D-Pad Studio is titled Vikings on Trampolines and of course has to be on this list since the studio is known for their pixel art for good reason. More interestingly, this is a co-op focused platformer with a variety of fun levels in which you are taking on various giant bosses but also a variety of mini games where conveniently trampolines are always present in every level. It looks fun and wacky with quite the variety which is always nice and also has single player support so be sure to wishlist the game. One of the games that brought me right back to my childhood is Dying Breed, a game which is not Command and Conquer or Red Alert, which you might assume based on the visuals alone, but my god, they have absolutely nailed the look and feel of the Westwood classic. This is a straight up real time strategy game which is pretty niche in this day and age, complete with base building, resource gathering, training and controlling your troops, but without the micromanagement on the level of something like Warcraft 3 with individual skills and abilities and even has cheesy FMV so got speed to this developer.
one of the most impressive looking pixel art titles is Mina the Hollower, coming to us from the developer of Shovel Knight and continues their excellence in the retro pixel art department. The top-down action-adventure title is quite different as compared to the side-scroller that is Shovel Knight, but it looks like they have been able to make a seamless transition, with one interesting note being that our heroine is able to jump which is unique. She is on a mission to save a cursed island, battling monsters and giant bosses in the process. The variety of trinkets and especially the whip primary weapon gives this a Castlevania feel and simply looks excellent, with his Kickstarter campaign actually stating a December 2023 release window, so I'm guessing it will probably be done by next year. This next title has been high up on my watch list ever since it was revealed, since even at the time, Replays did draw some comparisons to The Last Night mentioned earlier, with the use of 3D objects in the environment in addition to the pixel art sprites on the characters and enemies. It takes place in an alternate 1980s in which you play as an AI unwillingly trapped in a human body. The world and atmosphere looks awesome, and I would put this in the cinematic platformer category with what must be handcrafted segments and locations with beautiful shot compositions shown off in the trailers. The combat does also appear to be a highlight and looks brutal, especially with how our protagonist deals with multiple enemies. This studio was affected by the Russia-Ukraine war, which has led to the delay of the game, with team members and their families having to uproot and relocate to another country, so let's hope they found their footing and will manage to make the game. Here's a relatively new release that I absolutely love the look of since I follow their pixel artists on Twitter in which Arco is a gorgeous game which is, curiously, a tactics title with simultaneous resolution of turns. What this means is that you can stop and pause the combat to plan your next move but when time resumes, you and your enemies' attacks both fire off at the same time so there's elements of strategy, anticipation and timing in this. It tells three intertwining stories with their own unique characters, which I presume will cross paths eventually, being one of the most unique titles to check out. Here's another completely new title that has blown me away since it combines a live sim social RPG along with monster taming and JRPG style turn based combat. So, what's not to love in Bloom Town A Different Story? The characters, environments and enemies in this look fantastic, with the cozy life sim aspect being contrasted with turn-based combat against demonic bosses, so I'm interested to see how they interact. This also comes to us from Lazy Bear Games, best known for Punch Club and Graveyard Keeper, so you know that the pedigree is there and looks like a winner. From Blasphemous to The Last Faith, and now it will be no surprise that Mariachi Legends is of note, a combat-focused title that draws upon Mexican folklore coming to us from the developer of Nine Years of Shadows so you know the pixel art is going to be good. Play as a detective who makes a deal with death in order to become La Sombra, a powerful warrior with the ability to fend off criminals from his hometown in exchange for having to hunt down an immortal man who defied death herself, with some fantastic looking art and action, but if you want to play a great metroidvania right now, check out my list of the best here.